Hey Serpa Squad, I hope you're doing well. Tanner here, and in this one I'll set up a nano, no filter, black water aquarium, complete with a DIY background and other cool details. Let's get started. For my enclosure, I'll be using a one and a half gallon cube aquarium I got from Rob of Flip Aquatics Wild Aquashella this past September. The tank measures seven inches long by seven inches wide by seven inches tall, which is a great palette to work with. For the background, I'm primarily using scrap styrofoam from previous builds. I also have a tube of silicone, pond shield epoxy, cyanoacrylate superglue, garnet sand, lupani wood, spider wood, sandstone, a heat gun, and various tools to cut and carve with. To start, I measured the inside dimensions of the tank and marked the foam accordingly. A straight edge and blade were used to cut along these lines. After all of that, the foam fit into the tank perfectly. I wanted to keep this design simple with a single piece of Mupani wood. A statement piece, if you will. The wood was situated at a slight angle and pressed into the foam. I think it looks really cool. Just a simple, effective design. Everything was then removed from the tank. I made a few marks on the foam to indicate where the driftwood will rest and carved away. Doing so allows the wood to fit into the foam like a puzzle piece. After carving, everything fit together perfectly. I turned the tank on its side and situated sandstone on the background. These two were traced onto the foam. Like before I carved these sections so the stones will rest inside of a cavity. I liked how the pieces fit together and carved the remainder of the background. I made bumps and crevices to add nice definition. I also tapered down the edges to remove the need to conceal the sides of the aquarium. After carving and cleaning up the mess, I worked in some smaller stones. With all of the pieces in place and the foam carved down, I did a quick pass with the heat gun to harden the foam. I'm not doing this enough to melt the foam. A few passes will simply make the foam shrink up. Now the background is ready for the next step. The pieces were disassembled and silicone was applied to the rock indentations. This of course will secure everything together. The same was done with the driftwood. Per usual everything was left to cure for 24 hours. Now it's time to mix up the epoxy. This one is mixed in a 2 to 1 blend. If you plan on doing a project like this, make sure you do your research. Find an epoxy that is safe to use with plants and animals because not all are created equal. Some are toxic while curing and others will be toxic to animals even after the curing process. This one is designed for use in aquatic applications with fish. Once mixed, the epoxy can be applied to the foam just like paint. With an even coating on the entire surface, I pressed garnet sand into the wet epoxy and let it cure for a few hours. As expected, one coat wasn't enough to get an appropriate covering, so I repeated the process. Everything was left to cure overnight and I ended up with the background seen here. My vision was for it to look like the muddy bank of a stream or pond. I could have achieved a similar look for a fraction of the cost using silicone, but I believe this will be a durable, long-term solution even when submerged underwater. The problem with silicone is that pieces tend to fall out over time. Although the background looks good, it's missing those detail elements that will really take it to the next level. That's where the spider wood comes into play. I wove these into the background and over the driftwood. I want to give the illusion that roots have come through the dirt, or perhaps the dirt has fallen away and all that remains are roots, a branch, and stones. As you've seen me do before, I secured the branches with cyanoacrylate superglue and covered the excess with garnet sand.
Now this is something I think looks really cool and quite natural. Let's attach it to the inside of the aquarium. First I wipe down the glass with rubbing alcohol. As I've explained before, this will create the optimal surface for silicone to adhere to. After allowing the alcohol to gas off, I applied a generous amount of silicone to the back pane. The background was of course pressed into this layer and left to cure for 24 hours. Everything held together really well. I gave it a quick rinse to remove debris left on the glass. Here you have the finalized background which I think turned out really well. Let's move on to the remainder of the setup. For the substrate I'll use a combination of garnet sand and black sand. Although most of it will be covered up, I think the combination of the two should blend really well with the background. A thin layer was added to the setup. For hardscape I'll utilize the sandstone and spiderwood from earlier as well as a few Carignana pods. First I added stones and the seed pods. I think the combination of the two really makes for an interesting and natural looking aesthetic. Small accent stones were sprinkled throughout and blended with the sand. This will improve the sense of scale and add more textures. To complete the hardscape I added small pieces of spiderwood. It looks pretty natural as is, but leaf litter will elevate things even further. Prior to filling this up, I drained leftover tannin water through a coffee filter to remove debris. The tank was placed on the nano shelf and filled with water. First was the black water and then dechlorinated water to dilute the tannins. Initially I wasn't going to plant this at all, but I couldn't help myself. I decided to add a few rhizomes of Bulbitis uteloti and Anubius nana petit. Both are epiphytes so they can be planted within crevices throughout the tank. I also added a few handfuls of Salvinia minima and duckweed. Lastly I rounded up some snails from other tanks. Here it is, the Nano No Filter Blackwater Aquarium. It's small and unassuming at first glance, but once you take a closer look you're drawn in by the details. That's one of the reasons I included very few plants. I planned on only using floating plants, but I thought the Bulbitis would be a great addition. I can totally picture it growing up and out of the water long term. Then the Anubius was included to offset the Bulbitis. I wanted this setup to look like a slice of nature cut right out of a creek or pond. In my opinion, the details, plants, botanicals, black water, and of course the background really work together to achieve this look. While in the background, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I've been experimenting with some new methods and this was one of them. Since the epoxy cures rigid and firm, it should retain all of the sand quite well. I'd say the main con is that the epoxy is fairly expensive. That said, I'd rather pay more up front and have a long term solution than pay less using something like silicone. I'll show more about this method in a future video. My idea is to stock this setup with the dwarf anchor catfish I got a few weeks back. I think they would be a great addition, but I'm unsure if I think this tank is too small. They're pretty sedentary, so I don't see it being an issue. Aside from that, everything about this tank is ideal for them. Let me know if you have a better stocking idea though. I'm open to suggestions. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. As always, I thank you so much for watching and really hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think about the finished product down in the comments. 
Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.